Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And we recall that Jesus calls all of us poor in spirit, but the kingdom of heaven is ours. The kingdom of heaven is given to us all now in various means, the forgiveness of sins, the waters of baptism, the Lord's Supper, the Holy Spirit who has given us faith, and of course through our brothers and sisters right here this evening in Christ. See, we are all inheritors of the kingdom of God, the, the kingdom of God that Christ brought with him. Yet, at the same time, we are all poor in spirit. We live lives as both saints and sinners, having Christ's forgiveness now through his death and resurrection. Yet, every day, we wake up and we keep continuing to fall short. We're waiting for Christ to return. So what to do? What does this mean for us? Do we just go on with our lives and, and sin and sin and sin, knowing that grace has been given to us? Well, as Paul would say, by no means. And so Jesus actually answers this question, what does it mean to be a disciple? And he's already redefined what it means to be blessed. Being a disciple of Christ does not mean to have a big house with a shiny car and, and lots of kids. But being blessed does not mean sitting on the beaches of Jamaica or at the mountains in Colorado and in a nice sunset. No, being blessed means something far, far different. If you recall, as we are transformed by Christ, we will mourn. We will be persecuted. We will want to live righteous lives. And people will hate us for it. So Jesus continues on telling us what exactly that means and looks like. Jesus doesn't tell us just what to do, but he actually tells us who we are. He tells the disciples this. He tells you this. He says, you are salt. You are light. Both things are, are, are extremely important in our everyday lives. Things that we use and rely on more than we actually might know. Take salt, for example. There's so many different uses of salt, and even ones you might not think of. Right? Obviously, maybe the main one you think of is salt is helpful for food. It gives us flavor when we cook. But salt has a lot of other uses. Instead of just making our taste buds happy, salt is actually used to sterilize things. Before refrigeration, it was used to preserve. We even use salt to soften our water and melt ice on our roads. See, growing up in Minnesota, I always kind of took salt for granted. Because it was so commonplace. Obviously, uh, we were never shocked to see snow or ice cover the roads. And, and we certainly weren't going to let something like a little bit of snow or ice stop us from getting to school or to work or anything else that matters. My dad always told me, right, he walked to school uphill both ways through seven feet of snow. And for swim practice, they cut holes in the ice. See, us Minnesotans aren't afraid of something like snow. We're well prepared. See, I remember driving to school through a snowstorm that no one should send their kids to school in, seeing those big orange snow plows. You'd see lines of them going across the highways. They were almost invincible. And when you would go behind them, you'd see something that was even more important than the plow itself. You'd see this spinning wheel scattering salt all over the roads. And the salt 
was actually more powerful than the snow and the ice as it, as it lands on the road and as the sun warms it up. It would actually just melt the ice and snow away to a mess of brown slush, but it made it so you could drive. It made it so we could get to school. It made it possible for us to go on with our lives. See, I remember also growing up that on our front step in the winter, we always had a bag of ice melt on our walkway. See, while the plows were really nice to have, salt was the magic ingredient to our success. And I never really noticed how important salt was to society or how almost necessary it was uh, for society until I lived in North Carolina for a year. See, they are far less equipped to handle even the lightest dusting of snow. While I served there on Vicarage, I remember a few times where there was less than an inch of snow on the ground and everything at church was canceled. And I woke up the next day to go go to work because I'm a tough Minnesotan and a little bit of snow is not going to bother me. And on the way there, I decided to stop at Starbucks and they themselves were closed. But they weren't the only ones. The whole town and city had shut down for less than an inch of snow. And now obviously I thought it was pretty funny uh, that so many people could be afraid of such a little thing until I saw something driving on the road. See, it wasn't a big, orange, invincible snowplow scattering salt, but no, instead, it was just a road grader. Not meant for snow at all. Not meant to remove ice, either. The fact of the matter is, is they were not equipped. Their issue wasn't that they were wimpy, necessarily, but their issue was they didn't have salt. They didn't have salt for for the roads, for the sidewalks of buildings, for anything. See, salt is so important to us. And not only to uh, melt the roads, but it's important in many different areas of society and life. It said salt preserves things. It can disinfect wounds. Salt is actually important to our body's chemical makeup. Salt might be one of the most essential things to life. So now think about salt. And hear Jesus say to you, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt the earth. You are important. You are vital. You are absolutely necessary. You are essential to the earth. But Jesus doesn't just end there, of course. He actually goes on to talk about what happens when salt is no longer salty. Or to translate, when salt is no longer itself. Imagine using salt that wasn't salty. Food would be bland. Things would not be disinfected. Food would not be preserved. Our bodies would be out of sync. Wounds would fester. Roads would remain icy. So what happens when salt loses its saltiness. Salt that is not salty no longer serves the purpose for which it was made. And therefore, Jesus says, what do you do with something that does not work in its function? You cast it out. You throw it on the pavement. You let it be trampled underfoot. And this is the problem. What good is something that cannot serve its purpose? What good is a light bulb that does not shine? What good is salt that has no flavor? It is useless. And if something is created and built 
and it doesn't do the task that it was created for, it is not good. See, what good is salt if not salty? What good is the lamp if it is not shining? How can people in the house see? See, we are the salt of the earth. Just as salt serves a purpose and was created for a purpose, just as light was created to shine so we could see in the darkness, so each one of you have been made the disciples of Jesus to serve a purpose. You have been created to serve God's purpose. And when you don't, when you no longer are salty, the earth suffers on account of us. When Christians are not being who they are, the children of God sent into the world to serve and love our neighbor, the world hurts. A Christian who is a disciple of Christ in name only is as good as salt that has lost its taste. Its only use is to be cast out and trampled on. So this reminded me of a lot when I was in high school. I was in a lot of uh, different activities, and I would often leave the house in the evening to go out with friends or whatever the occasion was. I don't remember exactly, but my parents stuck something in my head every single time. As I was reaching for the doorknob, almost every time I would hear my mom or dad gently and lovingly reminding me, saying, remember who you are, or remember whose you are. And they didn't say that because they didn't trust me. They didn't say that because they thought I was going out to do something I shouldn't, but instead, just simply as a reminder to be who and whose I was. See, Jesus is reminding each and every one of us to be who you are. So who are you? Brothers and sisters in Christ, my fellow Christians, my fellow disciples, remember who you are. And be who you are. Be salty. And not like in the snarky or rude or sarcastic sense that many people do today, but as the salt of the earth. So what does it mean to be salty? Well, it means to go out and do good works. And I know, I know, especially for uh, the, the long-time Lutherans, your alarm bells are going off saying, oh my gosh, he's talking about good works. He wants us to earn our way into heaven. No. But we have been made to do good works. We have been made to serve and love our neighbor. We don't do good works to get into heaven. Absolutely not. But we do good works because it is who we are. It's not for our own benefit. It's not to climb the rungs of the ladder to heaven, but it, it, it's for our neighbor because God doesn't need our good works, but our neighbor does. So be salty. <laughs> Go into the world and, and be useful and loving to your neighbor. See, Jesus continues on in this sermon telling us the many ways to which we are called to be the salt of the earth. The different ways to live according to God's will or how to be who we were to be created. See, to be the salt of the earth is to care for those who are hungry. To invite them maybe into your home to feed them. To be the salt of the earth is not only protesting an abortion clinic, but to be ready to adopt a child. To be the salt of the earth is to serve at your local food shelf. 
to be the salt of the earth is to invite someone over for dinner. To be the salt of the earth is to be a good parent, a good employee, a good student, a good worker. To be the salt of the earth is not just writing a check and giving a donation, but it's loving and serving your neighbor. All for their benefit, all for the glory of God. So when they see your good works, they will praise him who created us to be salt. So be salty, brothers and sisters. Don't do it for yourself. For these works do nothing for you. But they do something for the world around you. They do something for your community. They do something for those who have not seen or heard of Jesus. They do something for Christ's church. It's these works are all about who we are. See, this, this isn't bad to want to do good works. See, because the beauty is that this is our very identity. Jesus doesn't say you uh, are kind of like salt. He doesn't say you act like salt. He doesn't say you kind of play and pretend to be salt. He says you are salt. Just like he says you are forgiven. Just like he says you are my child, you are salt. Jesus, the Son of God, speaks to us our identity. We are forgiven, and we are restored, and we are his children, and we are blessed, and we are salt. So be salty, brothers and sisters. Love your neighbor. Be who you are. Because when you are, when we are, the world is better. See, the world is better when Christians actually act like Christians. Because when we act like Christians, we show the world the saving love of Christ. And we glorify God. So be salty. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.